Welcome. <laughs> Hi. How are you doing? Don't <laughs> make me laugh. Okay, this is not gonna go well. Hi everyone, my name is Megan from the blog Wilsonhomestead.com and this is my husband Luke. Ow. <laughs> and today we are filming a homeschool QA. I've been on Instagram and I ask you guys all of your questions about homeschooling. Both me and my husband were homeschooled as kids, all the way from the start to the end of high school. And we plan to unschool our children. So be sure to follow me on Instagram if you want to be a part of any future Q&As and you want to enter your own questions. But we're just gonna answer all of these today. This is Luke's first time filming a video with me. So this is gonna be fun. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but let's get right into these questions. So the first question kind of overlaps with another one, so I'm just going to read them both together. What was your school experience like, and what did school look like for you guys? Luke, do you want to go first? <laughs> uh, sure. For me, homeschooling was really good. Uh, I had six kids in my family, and my mom taught us all, all the way through. And we weren't too structured. Uh, she would help the younger kids more with all their subjects, getting through them. And as you would get older, you just become more and more independent kind of just schedule your day how you like, uh, doing what subjects in whatever order you want it. Did you guys do school in the mornings? Like did you have school that you need to finish before you could do free time? I would always want to finish it the first two days. Yeah. Because it's not as fun to play if you have work to look forward to. Yeah, I'll finish that tonight. Kind of the same thing for us. Mom was a lot more hands-on with our school when we were younger. We would have this schedule taped to the refrigerator, uh, these time blocks, an hour or so for each subject, however long it should take us. And then we would move on to the next one and check the one off that we had done. And especially as I got further into high school, I was getting pretty independent with all of my subjects that I had to do. I pretty much had free reign of teaching myself the curriculum, and then Mom would just make sure I had been doing all of it. But I feel like that was one of the things that I really liked about it was that I got to be really independent as I got older and I just learned how to teach myself things. So I really enjoyed that it was more independent learning as I was more into high school. We would usually do school in the mornings. As soon as we got up, we would have breakfast and do all of our getting ready for the day things and then we would do all of our school kind of as fast as we could because then we could just play for the rest of the day or do whatever we wanted. So it's kind of where we would do school in the morning and then three activities in the afternoon. And so that's kind of what our days look like. All right, question number two. This is a two-parter. Uh, what was your favorite and least favorite part of being homeschooled? And what did you like and dislike? Probably my favorite part was just being able to be home with my family and we got to learn a lot more real life experiences. I feel like we got a better ed education overall, just being able to be more independent and curious ourselves rather than having to sit through a classroom. I mean, least favorite part, I mean, I don't really have public school to compare it to, but I mean, sometimes I would get tired of doing school and I didn't always want to do all the subjects. I especially struggled in math, and I guess I just liked math, but I don't really know of a certain particular thing about homeschooling specifically that I dislike. <laughs> For me, probably one of my favorite parts was just the flexibility of it all, uh, especially during the later years. Um, we could kind of just dictate our own schedule. I remember trying to wake up early and get my math done, all my other subjects done really fast so I could have the rest of the day off to play outside and do whatever. And that's just a really good benefit of it. And especially being in a big family, uh, with all of our schedules, we get to work together easier and a lot of family time and game nights and movie nights and stuff like that. It's really fun. Like if we want to do some special event, like go sleep over at our cousin's house or whatever, we could work ahead in all of our subjects and get that day off or if something just came up and we could enjoy the whatever going on and be able to just make up for it later and we're just set to a hard and fast schedule. So that was really nice. As for my dislike, um, I again, I don't have public school to compare it with, but it seems like that would be kind of fun to go to school in some ways, especially uh, playing sports. I 
like to experience that more. What advice would you give to someone thinking about homeschooling their children? I'd say just don't stress out about it. Just dive right into it. You're going to make mistakes, but everyone does. You just need to kind of figure it out as you go. I mean, you can do research ahead of time to get an idea, but you know, homeschooling looks different for every family out there and you just have to find what works best for you guys. I mean, you can't be an expert on every subject before you start teaching your children. I mean, even teachers in public school are only good at a particular subject, so you have to like give yourself grace and be humble in front of your children and make sure that you're just willing to do research with them and admit to them that you don't know everything about math or calculus or whatever it is that you're needing to teach them. And also, don't try to replicate um, public school in your home. In public school, the kids are sitting in classrooms for just hours and hours and it's very rigid and I think if you try to replicate public school in your home, it's not going to go as smoothly as if you're just a little bit more relaxed and they will learn things on their own even if you don't teach them every single subject. So just be relaxed with it. And be ready to be flexible. Like, you don't have to have everything figured out and all, your, all the right books. Mm -hmm. The whole curriculum all figured out before you start. Like, right, just, just start with one piece at a time. You can add new things and take away things that aren't going well and just figure it out. What types of activities did you both do for socializing, like parents meet up with other homeschoolers? We did a lot of um, like homeschool groups. We, When I was younger, we, we lived in Phoenix, we did a Hebrews at Home group where we would learn all all sorts of different like homemaking skills and we learned different things about baking and all, like all kinds of stuff like even hiking and just, like outdoor stuff so it was a really fun group that was probably one of my favorite ones we did we went on a lot of field trips we go see uh, different historical places my main favorite kind of extracurricular activity that we did when i was in high school was snowboarding we would have a homeschool ski snowboard day like once a week a whole bunch of homeschoolers would go together and it was a lot of fun. That's actually, I think that's actually where I met Luke. There was a pretty big homeschool co-op uh, in our little town that I think they would meet up weekly and do different activities and such. That was mostly for my older brothers and for me when I got to that age we kind of had a smaller group that would meet at each parent's home every week and learn about a specific topic. One person was uh, teaching us how to fix our bikes and tune them up and I remember another was like a metal shop person and we made like these little shovels for shoveling out the ashes from your fireplace and it seems like another one was a woodworker I mean we built a birdhouse so it's fun to get together with other homeschoolers and learn these things and that helps a lot for socializing. Did you do online studies or just books? We were pretty much all books. We didn't really do too much online. Like we would look stuff up here and there, but did you have an online math? Um, no, I we did have math on the computer, but I didn't like it, so switch back. We did mostly books, especially in the earlier years. And then as I got further into high school, we did more and more online stuff. I would do my Saxon math. It was on a disc that I put it in the computer and I did a writing program, I think it was called Institute for Excellence in Writing, it was on the computer. I had another um, program that I think was for a bunch of different subjects together that I really liked. So we did kind of a combination of each, but as we got older we did more online stuff and I, I enjoyed both. Did you do high school and how was that for socializing as well? Was it hard to meet friends? So this overlaps with some of the other questions, but yeah, we were both all the way through high school even and yeah we kind of already talked about. There's a lot of questions about socializing. I think that's one of the main questions that homeschoolers get. I mean besides the like homeschool groups that we did, I talked to a lot of people. Like just being in real life and not just having to talk to people who are my age. I feel like I was socialized even better than homeschoolers. I mean when I was just starting high school I think or even younger I started my own business. I would, I had a flock of chickens, they, I would breed them and hatch the eggs and sell the chicks. I did a lot of horse training, I would train other people's horses, I would buy horses and train them and sell them. So I was like 
in contact with a lot of people of any age. We also had a lot of varying ages of people in our church that we would talk to. I remember we would have a goal of talking to three people at church that we hadn't talked to very often. And so we did get a lot of experience with talking to all ages of people, which I, I feel like that's something that public schoolers don't even get to experience because they only talk to children their own age. And that's not really teaching them like how to socialize in the real world when they get out there. So yeah, I feel like we got some pretty good socialization. And being homeschooled, like you have so much more flexibility to just let your kids come with you to the store or just whatever you're getting involved in. They can be there watching, seeing how you interact with people. They can be practicing. Like just let them live life with you and that's the best way to teach them. Yeah. The most enjoyable activity you did homeschooling, like maybe a trip or a lesson. I mean, I really enjoyed our Keepers at Home group where we learned all sorts of um, different skills and that was, those were some of my favorite lessons. I also really enjoyed literature. I have always loved to read so much. I love to write, so I feel like those lessons were probably my favorite. I would always go to those first and I, I would do those before anything else and then I would leave math till last. <laughs> The so homeschool snowboarding was kind of a homeschool trip that I, I really enjoyed that. That was probably yeah. one of my favorite like trips. But like we went on a lot of trips as children, but they weren't specifically like homeschool trips. Right. Like we were able to do a lot more camping or trips to the coast when everyone else is in school, so everything's not very busy. Yeah. We're going to uh, and you go to a lot like, like amusement parks. I guess that there's somewhat like homeschooling because you like when you go to travel places like the coast you learn a lot about the area and the culture and you go see historical monuments and like you learn about yeah. like the you know the wildlife and stuff so I guess that still kind of counts. I want to homeschool. Was building socialization skills hard for you? That goes along with the other two questions about socialization that we answered but no it wasn't hard. Did either of you ever want to go to school? I would say a little bit, like I was always kind of curious as to what it would look like, but for the most part, I knew that I would not like it probably, and schooling was, was way better for me. And I guess the, probably one of the main things I'd want to go to school for was so I could uh, do sports and all that, because I always liked playing football and doing all those types of act activities with my dad and my brothers. So that would be the only thing that I would have wanted to go for. I don't think I ever wanted to go to public school. I think that our parents were really well educated on why it was more ideal than homeschool and they brought me along like with all their research so I just knew that homeschooling was better for us. I just really enjoyed being home with our family and being able to have more experiences because we had the flexibility of homeschooling. So I don't really remember a time where I wished I was in school. What took you in the direction of unschooling? I think Luke was introduced to it first, and then he brought it to me. Where did you learn about that? I think it was like a podcast? Yeah, it must have been when I was first getting into podcasts a few years ago. I heard something about it, and then I started listening to the Unschooling podcast, uh, where this lady interviews all these families that have done it, and it sounded really interesting. And I've been looking into it more and more ever since then. How are you preparing? Favorite books, podcasts, groups, etc. Well, like you said, the Unschooling Podcast is a really good one. Another one is the One Free Family. I think they have a Facebook group too. Yeah. We would look up YouTube videos on Unschooling. I think we found uh, Joyful Chaos's channel. I think she's um, Ashley Nicole Wilson now. She changed her channel name. So she has a couple really good videos on unschooling. <laughs> but we'll link all the sources that we have. That unschooling podcast has like hundreds of episodes. So that has a lot of good information on there. Seems to be getting more and more popular and more YouTube channels popping up and tons of blogs. Yeah. Plenty of free information out there to look for it. How do you teach the subjects that you really struggle with learning yourself? That's a good question. I really struggle with math. Like really struggle with math. I do not like math at all. When it comes time to teach my children math, I'll have to buy some books on it. I'll probably get the Saxon math books because I, I really, those made a lot of sense to me when I was learning math. But I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have to be humble in front of them and 
just let them know that I'm not the greatest at math, so I'm gonna have to use tools like books and online lessons to teach them math. But like, if you have a subject that you're not super strong in, you'll, you just have to bring them with you in researching it. Yeah, you're not going to be able to teach your kids all the subjects in high school, or the average person isn't going to, at least. And there's just so many resources these days with the internet, uh, just online courses, and even tons of free content from YouTube and everywhere else that you can pretty much learn anything you want, and it's not like you have to know everything. You're not going to know everything that they want to learn. Right. You're trying to teach your kids how to learn and find out things for themselves. Right, like that's kind of the point of like school. Like it's yeah. teaching them to learn things for themselves. Like, even if you learned all this stuff in high school, by the time you're teaching your kids, you'll most likely have forgotten most of it. Right. So I say develop interest in certain things. I'll just, we'll just have to like do some research and find some resources for those subjects. Or if your spouse is strong in one subject, they can help with that more, or if you have friends or family or people from your homeschool group or whatever, like, surely someone knows what you're trying to teach your kids. That yeah. You do. Like, Luke is stronger in math than me, so I'll probably utilize his knowledge in math when it comes time to teach our kids math. And if they get past the point of what we know, we can help point them in the right direction to continue on their learning and dive down the YouTube rabbit hole. Yes, you can learn so much from YouTube, like anything you want to know. Will you be getting any sort of curriculum? Not really, I mean we might utilize pieces of curriculums when our children want to learn things, but like when I was growing up we used this online curriculum a lot, which I did really enjoy, but like I might use pieces of that curriculum or like certain books from curriculums, but I think for a lot of it will just be like looking up certain books or videos on topics that they want to know, but we won't be getting an entire curriculum. The main curriculum I remember using was Saxon Math growing up. I really liked how the lessons were laid out in that and really seemed to be able to understand it, but it depends on each child they're interested in butterflies, we can go get a butterfly book from the library. Or yeah. I mean, up. some kids don't learn as well with Saxon math either. There's a lot of like different curriculums for math, and like kids that learn better with like hearing things with not like an audio track. So it just like really depends on the kids. So I wouldn't want to like get a curriculum and lock ourselves into whatever's in that curriculum. That's one of the main problems with public schooling. All the kids are jammed in same age, in the same class, trying to learn the same thing, when some of them are going to be behind on math and not understand what's going on, some will be way ahead and are just going to be bored. Right. Like each child is super individual yeah. and you need to be able to be tuned in with them and know what they want to learn, and how they learn best, and that's what we're there for, we're their guide. Yeah, and that's like what's so great about Homeschooling can really be a lot more flexible with that, but like especially unschooling, it's like you're really just waiting for your child to be ready in each thing until you can try to teach it to them because it's just going to be so much easier. Their, their brains are going to be actually ready to learn the thing that, that they're learning, and they're not going to be like trying to force it into their heads and just like memorize things to get it on a test and then forget it as soon as the test's over. Like it's definitely going to be more worth their time, I guess. Like when you're interested in a topic, it's so much easier to learn and remember, like you're excited to learn about it, read about it, and practice it. Like when you think back to your days in high school, like what can you remember that you learned? Probably just the exciting subjects that you liked, like music class or whatever. Everything else just kind of fades as you get older. But what was the point of learning that? You can learn it when you need it in your life. There's no point in learning something way before you're actually going to do it. You're, you're just forcing all these random facts into your head that are like only for the purpose of like completing a test, not for real life. And then when you like get interested in that thing, you're going to have to relearn it because you're not going to remember what you learned about it. So that's all the questions that we have today. Go follow me over on Instagram so that, again, you can enter your own questions for our next Q&A. And if you have any specific video requests, like if you want us to do an unschooling video, just let us know in the comments below and we will work on that. But thank you for watching this video and I hope you guys are having a great day. We will see you in the next one. Bye. Yeah. Who is there? Who is that?